Throughout 1905, Einstein overflowed with ideas. Even today, it is called the Anus Mirabilis, Einstein's miracle year. He completed breakthrough works on the quantum theory of light, exploring light's particle nature, and on the existence of the atom. Then, in what was almost an afterthought, he applied special relativity to mass and energy. And this is what Einstein found. E equals mc squared, which means the energy contained in any object is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared, an enormous number. Every gram of matter contains a tremendous amount of energy. But if none of that energy escapes, none of that energy can be observed. It's like a fabulously rich man who never spends anything. No one can tell how rich he is. And if mass contains energy, then energy has mass. Every second, the Earth is struck by four and one-half pounds of sunlight. But as remarkable as Einstein's discoveries were, the world didn't seem to notice at first. Who could believe that a 26-year-old patent clerk who worked on physics in his spare time would alter forever our understanding of the universe? Why was I the one? Normal adults never stop to think about such concepts as space and time. These are things children ask about. My secret is I remained a child. I always ask the simplest questions. I ask them still. questions. Could God have created the universe any other way or had he no choice? And how would I have made the universe if I had the chance? It was Albert Einstein's astounding, almost arrogant ambition to read the mind of God. And he succeeded time and again, completely transforming our understanding of space, time, and light. Even after the publication of Special Relativity and the other discoveries of his miracle year, Einstein remained an examiner at the Swiss Patent Office. January 1907. Dear friend, I'm still a federal ink pisser with a decent salary. I work every day, eight hours at the patent office and at least one hour of private lessons. Yet I enjoy it here and there is much thinking to be done. But in science, Einstein was no longer an outsider. A growing number of physicists made the pilgrimage to the patent office. They would trek up to the top floor and ask a smartly dressed young man to lead them to Dr. Einstein. Einstein later told a friend that he had never met a real physicist before. His friend responded, didn't you look in the mirror? But even as his reputation grew, Einstein began to grasp the limitations of his special theory of relativity. In 1907, Einstein was asked to summarize everything then known about special relativity for a leading physics journal. 
He saw that his theory encompassed all of physics, except for one crucial gap. Gravity seems straightforward enough. A pound of pork, a pound of cherries, or of anything will move the scales the same amount because the Earth's gravity pulls on them all in exactly the same way. Yet what the Earth does to make itself felt by meat, potatoes, and us, that no one knew. Isaac Newton had shown that gravity governs the motion of the solar system as well. But even Newton's theory could not explain how gravity exerts its influence throughout the universe. That was the mystery of gravity. How is it that the heavens stay on track? What is it that orders the universe as a whole? Einstein, still in his 20s, was chasing the biggest game in physics. A tremendous gamble, as the great Max Planck tried to tell him. Max Planck warned me not to work on the theory of gravity. The problem was too difficult, he said, and even if I succeeded, no one would believe me. But I took it on anyway, and never worked so hard in all my life. The first theory of relativity was child's play compared to the problem of gravitation. Gravity is the most democratic phenomenon in the universe. It treats every object the same, no matter what it is made of, no matter how big it is. There were no exceptions to give Einstein a place to start. Compared to the problem of gravitation. Gravity is the most democratic phenomenon in the universe. It treats every object the same, no matter what it is made of, no matter how big it is. There were no exceptions to give Einstein a place to start. He had no idea how to approach the problem, until... Then all of a sudden, uh, it occurred to me. The glücklichste Gedanke meines Lebens, the happiest thought of my life. If a man falls from the roof of a house, he will not feel his own weight. In another of his thought experiments, Einstein put the idea this way. He asked, what if someone were in an elevator when the cable snapped? He would float weightless as he and the elevator both free fall at the same rate in the Earth's gravitational field. Then Einstein changed the scene. What if the passenger were in a rocket ship far from Earth? He would still float with no gravitational field to hold his feet to the floor. But what would happen if the rocket began to move? As it accelerates, the floor of the rocket rises. On its way up, it would catch the passenger, and to him, it would seem that gravity was holding his feet to the floor. And if gravity and acceleration feel the same, perhaps they are the same. And there is no difference between accelerating in outer space or standing in the Earth's gravitational field waiting for the elevator door to open. This was classic Einstein. His contemporaries found this equivalence of acceleration and gravity interesting. But only he realized that it could serve as the foundation of what would become a revolutionary new theory of gravity.